Okay, guys and gals, if you're watching this video, you are probably a trap shooter or you're interested in getting into trap shooting. Trap shooting started back in the late 1700s and they weren't shooting at clay pigeons, they were shooting at real pigeons and they were released from cages called traps. A lot sure has changed since then and what's really changed is the price of ammo. And that's the purpose of this video. I want to show you how you can practice at home and save yourself some money. Now there is no doubt, no substitute for live trap shooting practice, but I truly believe after doing my research that you can practice at home and become a much better shooter. I have researched a lot of athletes and Olympians out there and shooters that I'm around every week and they no doubt do work at home, whether it's gun lifts or dry firing at a target on a wall. So what I want to do is show you something that I've put together and it's a hybrid system and I've never seen it before and most of all it's affordable. I researched dry firing shooting mechanisms and systems that are out there and the cheapest ones probably start at about $800 and some get into the thousands. There's only a few out there and there really isn't anything affordable as far as I'm concerned. I'm retired and I'm living on savings and social security. And you know, I, I just can't afford to practice more than once a week and use two boxes of shells. So I need other ways to improve my shooting. So let's get started. All right, let's talk about those ammo costs. Now, in my case, uh, just for the summer league, we practice and shoot the summer league approximately 22 weeks so i can only afford two boxes of shells now the going rates for a box of shells and these are not high-end shells are around nine to ten dollars a box you can see here that this uh, box of remington gun club is uh, nine dollars and fifty cents so i'm going to need two of these every week that I practice for 22 weeks. And if we do the math on that, 44 boxes comes out to be $475.20 if you add the tax with that. And you know, it's gonna cost you more than that too because you know, depending on what your gun club charges to shoot 25 birds, you have to add that times 44. Well, in my case, it's $5 for target fees. So there's another $220 that I have to add. So if you look at all the costs for me and uh, just 22 weeks of shooting, it's $695.20. And that does not even include the gas for my Ford F-150. So it's expensive, no doubt. Let's talk for a minute about the history of dry firing. Dry firing is the practice of firing your gun without live ammo. When dry firing as a trap shooter, you are practicing your gun lift, your mount, and shooting at stationary targets while following through on your swing. When I first started researching dry firing to help shooters with your accuracy, uh, I found a few articles. A couple of them really stood out from the others. One such article was from 1955 called Try Dry Shooting to Improve Your Aim. I was impressed. Almost 75 years ago, there were believers in dry fire. But the next article really surprised me. It was titled, Plain Directions for Acquiring the Art of Shooting on the Wing. And here's the real kicker. It was dated 1873. Yep, you heard me, 150 years ago. So if you ever thought dry firing was something new and untested, think again. Let's move on to the first component needed for trap shooting practice at home. There are three components to make this new trap practice system work. Two of the products are proven leaders in the field of shooting. The third is something you've never seen before, so stick with me as I describe each component. I'm sure many of you have heard of the Terry Jordan wall chart. It has been around for more than 40 years and is endorsed by many professional trap champions. Terry has won eight Ontario trap shooting titles and many in the USA. There are over 3,400 charts in use 
and it is used by many youth coaches and now in 17 different countries. Terry sends you way more than just a chart. He understands the mental part of the game as well. He'll give you all the instructions you need to set up the chart and proper procedures when shooting at targets and follow through. He'll also give you many tips like blocking words and soft focus to improve your mental state and sight acquisition of the bird. He's a great guy and when I first got my chart, I had a question regarding the black dots in the chart to represent the lead and preferred point of aim. Keep in mind that I started trap shooting four years ago, so I have much to learn. I asked Terry why the black dots were always to the left or right of the bird and never slightly above the bird to the left and right. In my mind, leading the bird should be more than left to right. Terry explained that all trap guns shoot higher than the point of aim and the gun would raise the point of impact for me. I already knew that, that some guns shoot 60, 40, 70, 30, and even 100% above the point of aim. But for some reason, when I was shooting, I was leading the bird too high, and that explains my losses that were going over the top. He's a good teacher. One of the top shooters endorsing the use of a wall chart at home is Olympic gold medalist Russell Mark. Here's a picture of Mark during one of his YouTube videos called The Five Steps to Success. And yes, that's a Jordan wall chart. I'll include links to the Russell Marks 5 Tips video at the end of this video. The chart is an actual picture of House 2B at the World Shooting and Recreational Complex in Sparta, Illinois, home of the annually held Grand American World Trap Shooting Championships. The house and angle of spread are true to scale on the chart. For 16-yard practice, you stand 13 feet from the 10-foot chart. Each foot back from 13 feet is like uh, a yard in handicap. So with 27 yards, you'd have to stand 24 feet back from the chart. You need to purchase the 10-foot chart. Terry has other sizes, but the hybrid system that we're talking about here today is based on the 10-foot chart. The Jordan wall chart has been used for decades in its native form, it helps you practice your form, stance, trigger timing, and helps you develop a smooth swing. It also builds stronger arms and shoulder muscles. When I first got my chart, I was going to build a 2x2 two two frame to display it so it would be perfectly flat with no wrinkles. After doing the math, it would cost me about $85 or $86 in lumber. So I decided to go with an 85 by 10 foot photography backdrop stand uh, from a company called Emart on Amazon. That was only $44.98. I also spray painted the black clamps that they give you with it with a matte white so they would blend in better with the sky of the wall chart. Once we add the other two components of our hybrid practice system, we will take the wall chart to a new dimension. Let's move on to component number two. Before I tell you what the second component is, I wanted to tell you how it came to be in this system. When I first started thinking about creating an affordable trap shooting practice system, I knew I needed a few things to keep it interesting in order for me not to become bored with it. I knew I needed a realistic backdrop that had targets, a natural setting, and a trap house for proper hole points and viewpoints. That's where the Jordan wall chart comes in. I also needed something to provide me with feedback. I wasn't content with dry firing at the chart and relying on the audible feedback of the trigger telling me if I had a decent shot or not. That might be okay back in 1873, but I need visual feedback. And that brings us to component number two, a laser, but not just any laser. There are tons of 12 gauge lasers out there that are just boresight lasers. These lasers stay on uh, the entire time after you load the batteries. Those products wouldn't help me at all. In fact, they would probably hurt me. What I mean by that is, is if I used one of those cheap boresight lasers, I wouldn't be concentrating on the bird. I'd be concentrating on the laser, and that wouldn't help me at all. I needed a 12 gauge laser that was different. I needed a laser that would only turn on after the trigger was pulled. I also needed it to stay on the entire time after the shot was taken. That way I got feedback on the location of the hit and feedback on my follow through swing after the shot was taken. 
Well, I finally found one, one from a company that was well established. I found a laser called the Pink Rhino made by Mantis. And after researching them, I can tell you these guys have great credentials. Here's a few I thought were worth mentioning. First off, uh, the US military and special forces train with Mantis. Also, law enforcement in every state of the union are using Mantis and shooters in over 60 countries use Mantis every day to practice and improve their skills and scores. I'll give you a link to a YouTube video with Lena Michalik and how she used Mantis products to help her win the 2022 USPSA Multi-Gun Nationals. One of Lena's sayings that has stuck with me is, you have to earn your live fire with dry fire. You know, she's a, an amazing shooter and a testament to the quality of Mantis products. Hey, I wonder if Mantis has a laser for the 105 howitzer on my old Marine Corps M60A1. It sure would save me a lot of money on powder when I'm reloading. <laughs> Anyways, for those of you worried about dry firing your gun, the Pink Rhino's end cap acts as a snap cap to protect your shotgun during dry firing. So don't worry about firing pin damage while using it. And here's the most important reason to use this product when practicing indoors. The Pink Rhino allows you to use your gun and your trigger. Every other indoor trap practice solution I have researched did not truly allow you to use your trigger mechanism. Their solutions required you to temporarily fasten a device or a micro button to your trigger to activate the laser. I don't know about you, but I want to use my trigger. By using my trigger, it gives me the same exact trigger pull and feel I'm using on the line. It also works great for a release trigger. The Pink Rhino fits the bill perfectly for this solution. Let's move on to component number three and get ready for a science lesson. The last component I needed for this solution wasn't going to be found on Amazon. I need targets, laser targets. I needed targets that had some type of representation that showed the same diameter of a shotgun pattern and what it would look like 35 yards away. The first thing I did was take one of my mini cardboard pattern boards and put some white tape on the left and right side of the 30 inch circle. Next we had to place the pattern board 35 yards away. The reason for 35 yards is that it's a good distance to pattern test your shotgun based on the bird breaking 19 yards from the trap house on average when standing at the 16 yard line. If that clay bird finds itself in that 30 inch circle during its flight, it's in trouble. I'm sure I'll get comments from people who say, oh, you know, uh, if you shoot quicker, it won't be 35 yards. It might be 33 yards, according to Remington. Well, 35 yards is a pretty good average that I've seen out there on a lot of articles. I needed to have a mean average. Many articles speak of the 35 being okay. So uh, now that uh, our 30 inch circle is 35 yards away, I needed a way to measure what that 30 inch pattern looked like at the distance in inches. So to perform that measurement, I took a 16 and 5 8 inch dowel and placed it on one end of my cheekbone. And uh, the other end of the dowel, I placed a vernier caliper. Uh, it could have been a, a 17 inch dowel, but that's what I had in the wood shop, so that's what I used. Now, all I had to do was start rotating the jaws of the caliper until the two pieces of white tape were perfectly between them with no space. Once I was sure my measurement was correct, I locked down the micrometer so it wouldn't move. My measurement ended up being 0 0.40 inches or 10.16 millimeters, but the measurement really isn't what's important. What's important is being as accurate as you can and then locking down the micrometer. The next step was to go inside to the 13 foot line. Once we got inside, I stood at the 13 foot line from the chart and held the dowel to my cheekbone again with the micrometer against it. I then taped a four inch circle to the wall chart and used that as a starting point. I ended up with four and a quarter inches being the diameter lined up perfectly in the micrometer. I could have used elementary geometry called the intercept theorem, but my chances of people falling asleep or going to watch a different YouTube video would have skyrocketed. So. Uh, we're not going to use any geometry here. 
But I do like the sound of the intercept though. Kind of what we do when trap shooting is intercepting, shooting where the bird will be. Now all I had to do is create a quantity of 13 four and a quarter inch circles, and that would be enough laser bird targets for the 13 clay targets that are on the Jordan wall chart. My first beta test was a red circle that I taped to the chart. I quickly decided that was a bad idea for two reasons. First, the red color on the Jordan chart was too much contrast to the white sky background, and it would take my concentration away from the black lead dot I was supposed to be focusing on. Secondly, taping the target was going to be a pain in the butt for moving the targets. And if the tape ever damaged the wall chart, I was going to say bad words. So the answer was to 3D print a new four and a quarter inch crosshair target with clear PLA plastic material and incorporating a snug fit hole for earth magnets to hold it to the chart. I would also have to print another magnet holder for the back side of the chart that would connect to the magnet on the laser bird. Now with the clear PLA plastic, the new targets blended in nicely on the chart, but still visible enough to see a hit or a miss while I was shooting. These laser birds will be available on eBay. Just use the search words laser bird targets and you'll find them. Now I'd like to show you my setup and a working demonstration. All right, let me give you a guided tour of my setup here. Uh, I am standing 13 feet back from the Terry Jordan wall chart. And uh, what I like to do is I just marked it off uh, on the concrete floor in my basement. And I got a little piece of rubber here so I can set my gun down on that. And the first thing I knew I was going to have to do was install some type of a light. Now there was a regular light bulb in my basement, but I ended up putting a, a high powered LED model. You can see it there and I've got two of the legs, they move and I aim those towards the chart. And uh, that worked out good, but I ended up with a lot of glare going back into my face. So uh, what I did to cure that was I took a piece of uh, half inch plywood and put some foil on it for reflective uh, purposes and uh, screwed that up to the floor joist. And that worked out really good. It gives me the light I want on the chart, nice even light. And it also, uh, blocked out any glare coming back at me standing at the 13 foot line. The, uh, the stands that I have here are photography backdrop stands. And I did the math. It was around $45, I think. I'll give you a link for that if you guys want to buy one of those on Amazon. But it was way less than buying two by two lumber and a lot easier. And if I wanted to take my show on the road, I could too comes with these neat little sandbags. Now, I didn't put sand in there. I make a lot of sinkers when I'm surf fishing, so I threw a few lead ingots in there. But anything you got that's heavy, it does stabilize it. The only thing I did notice was, is with the chart on there, which really doesn't weigh much, uh, it was a little bowed in the middle. So I took an 80-inch shower rod, and I siliconed a piece of three quarter inch copper union on there. I, I cut the copper union in half and then I siliconed it to the top. And, and that way when I go to connect it to my rod here, the uh, photography backdrop, it doesn't want to slip off. And that worked out really nice. It, it straightened it right up. I want to show you how easy it is to attach these laser birds to your wall chart. When I designed these, I put a earth magnet on the laser bird itself, and then we've got another earth magnet with opposite polarity, and uh, we will uh, put that on the back side of the chart, and you won't have to worry about tape or damaging the chart at all. I'll show you how easy it is. Just drop the small one on the back side, and then it'll automatically go to it. Go ahead and raise the bird to wherever you want it. And 
and you are done. Let's talk a little bit about placement of the laser birds on the Terry Jordan chart. If you're paying attention, you probably wonder why I've got the center of the laser birds crosshair uh, a little bit above the black dot that indicates lead. And the reason for that is, is if you're familiar with trap guns, you know that all trap guns shoot a little bit different from each other depending upon uh, how they were manufactured. Some are uh, manufactured to shoot a 70-30 pattern, some are 60-40, some for skeet are 50-50. But when you go to use your pink rhino, you're going to have to determine how high your gun shoots. So what you're going to do is similar to a uh, pattern board test, you're going to go back to the 13 foot line and you're going to bench rest your shotgun and you're going to take a shot. And when you take a shot, you're going to be aiming at that black dot. And this will probably be easier if you had somebody helping you. But now once you take the shot, you're going to notice that because the pink rhino is, you know, in the bore of the gun and the sights are obviously uh, aiming a, a little bit lower because the gun does shoot higher, you're going to measure the distance that, uh, that that light is above the black dot. Now, in the case of my Browning BT100, it's three quarters of an inch. So what I did was I... I've, I'm a woodworker, so I've always got scraps all over the place. And I've got this little piece of wood that is going to uh, allow me to quickly go to all of my targets and measure from the center of the black dot to the center of the laser bird, three quarters of an inch. And, and then you're done. You know, now you can start practicing. Now, let's say that you've got a friend that is shooting with you. Well, that's no big deal. You know, we don't have to worry about adjusting any lasers on this or anything. All you got to do is have them go ahead and do their bore sight test. And, you know, maybe they're uh, a little higher. Maybe they got a 100% gun and you got to go an inch or an inch and a quarter. You just uh, go ahead and go to all your targets and move them up to the space. Like I say, it's easier if you have either a, a small wooden ruler or a jig. And uh, they're easy enough to move with the earth magnets. And that's it. Your, your friend is ready to shoot. So um, that's one of the features of having the magnets like this is if you've got a group of people practicing, you know, let's say you decide to either co-op or you go to buy one of the Terry Jordan charts for your club. You know, it's, it's going to be easy for you to compensate for the different guns that are going to be used on the chart. So basically, when you take your shot at this dot, if you've got that laser landing anywhere within this four and a quarter inch circle, you're within the pattern and you've got a great chance of breaking that bird. Oh. All right, so we've covered all of the components. Let's cover the costs. You've got your 10 foot Jordan wall chart, that's 195. You got the pink rhino, that's 39.97. And you've got your laser birds, that's $29. A total of 263 and 97 cents. I think we've accomplished our mission. Early on in the video, I told you the cheapest system started at 800 and went to 2000 or more. So I think this is an affordable solution for trap shooters at home. Now you've got everything you need to practice dry fire at home and practice makes perfect. I guarantee you 
The professionals mentioned at the beginning of this video practice more than once a week. I've been practicing 200 rounds of laser shooting at home every week for the last four weeks. My shoulder and arm strength has improved, my gun swing is getting smoother, and my focus has improved along with my trigger timing during the shot. In closing, this is not a replacement for live fire practice. This is about increasing your repetition without increasing your costs. I hope you enjoyed this video and its content. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and join the channel. And that'll do it for this video.